welcome back to a, another video on my channel. It's my second video, and here I am. We're in the motorhome. This is where I live uh, full time. Me, Carlos the Rottweiler, and me, Mrs. Jen. Um, since my last, since my first video, I had a couple of comments um, on the home brewing forum asking, um, you know, how does delivery work here and stuff. Well. We don't actually live in our motorhome and travel around. We live in the motorhome, but work on a holiday park down in Dorset. So all our deliveries get sent to the main office, which is which is great. Um, so yeah, this is this is essentially where we live. Curtains pulled back there. What that's the sitting area. But what we've done is because we live in it full time, uh, we've actually pulled out the um, the main bed area. So um, that's where we sleep. We've got the main telly in there. This area where Carl is, this is the um, the dining area, but it's also Carl's bed. He sort of sleeps there. And then this is the uh, the galley kitchen, if you will. This is where all the magic happens, because I love to cook. Uh, the other bit of magic that happens behind that curtain. Uh, but yeah, so this is um, where I live. A little bit different in it to what most of you guys. You've probably heard about van lifers and YouTubers, but we've probably never come across a van lifer that does home brewing too. Well, I'm the guy. I'm bringing it to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, today's video um, is going to be a brewing video, as you can tell by the um, the title of the video. Uh, we are brewing the Muntons Hazy IPA. There we go. Like I said in the first video, really excited to do this. Um, coming back into home brewing after six or seven years probably closer to seven years now um really wanted to start doing all grain brewing only because of the space didn't want to get 30 litre uh, fermenting vessels uh, but lo and behold it's happened um you all know exactly what it's like it's a bug in it do you know what i mean um i've got plenty of space uh where i'm feel, where the camera is right now there's another massive double bed um behind so that's where i store a lot of my stuff I, mean, I am actually utilizing the dining area as well for a, a little bit of storage at the moment but yeah so the whole idea uh, for me was um coming back into home brewing in the van was all grain brewing because i can do smaller batches um but unfortunately or fortunately coming across the uh the hazy um ipa on uh, the malt miller's website Oh, that looks bloody good. Did a bit of research online. So is it um, Rick Does Brews? He did a cracking little review on it. And he kind of sold it to me. But from there, I obviously went on and uh, looked at some of the other reviews about it. And I thought, I've got to have myself a bit of that. So uh, went on to the malt miller. Splashed a bit of cash there, getting a bit more gear. And that's what we're doing today. We're doing the Muntons um, Hazy IPA. So sit tight. Grab yourself a beer. Oh, just want to mention, I'm drinking, sorry about the light. I'm drinking this uh, Ukrainian um, beer at the minute. Thought I'd do me bit if I could do, before we all get nuked. Um, so I think you can get these from um, from most supermarkets at the moment. Tenner a case. It's, for me, it's 4.8%. 4, 4 it's, it's a grass cutting beer, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's nice enough. Um, it's a bit like a Foster's or a Stella. I can't stand Foster's, but, you know, I'm nearly through it. I drank most of them yesterday, so I'm on my last two. And, uh, yeah, go grab yourself a case and uh, do your bit, rightly or wrongly. You know, whatever your political views are, let's not get there. But I think I've done I've done my bit, you know, getting a bit pissed. Um, and in the same time, I'm doing a bit of humanitarian, you know, humanitarian aid there, so... Yeah, go grab yourself one. Anyway, guys, yeah, grab yourself a beer and uh, follow me as we um, make this beer. Can't wait for it. Let's do it.
Right, we're going to uh, empty all the sanitizer out of this. Um, what I've done is I use the Chem Clean that calls for 50 grams to 5 litres. Now, obviously, they are brand new, but having done on brew before, you can never be too careful, can you? So, um, we've put 5 litres of water in there. Uh, obviously, you just saw I utilise where I live. Would have been a bit difficult, wouldn't it? You know, you're probably all wondering, how's he going to do this? Well, I can utilise some of the facilities that we've got on site. Um, uh, so, yeah, I've cleaned clean the uh, the fermenter with the uh, the chem clean and I've just uh, put in some of this uh, no rinse um, chem sam um, and that calls for 10 mil of chem sam to 5 litres of tap water so yeah right let's get this drained out and uh, let's start the brew properly exciting times right Let's take a look inside the uh, the Muntons box and what it's calling for. Let's take a look what we get in it. So as soon as you open the box, you're greeted with a, uh, a hop sock. <coughs> Cock sock. Um, looks like it, doesn't it? Um, anyway, sorry about that. Um, you're greeted with uh, your hops and uh, you get two um, packets of uh, mosaic and two packets of citra. Now I'm crap at maths, but 28 times two of your citra grams. Uh, hey, we're all right on this one. You get 30 times two of your mosaic, 60 gram. See, we're winning. Right, and also, which is a great thing that I like about this kit, when I were doing lagers all them years ago, I started on a Cooper's kit, now, my first beer, I was just like, I did a, it was just a standard lager that Cooper's did. Anyway, when I brewed it, I didn't have my fermentation fridge at that point, but that taste I got, I got, it was just that own brewery taste, you know what I mean? Anyway, I had a look online, and I, and I found out that obviously, at that point, I weren't clued up on it all, but I found out that obviously, lagers are to be brewed at a lower temperature, Lager comes from a German word, lagen, which is, means to store and to store at cold temperatures. Um, so I started getting my kits, but I was changing my yeasts out. So with your Cooper's kits, um, I don't want to teach you all how to suck eggs, and I'm, I'm not a man of wisdom or anything, but this is what I learned all them years ago. When you're getting your lager kits, unless you're getting something that's a different ale, a different, sorry, a different yeast uh, like this, your general kits are coming with ale uh, yeast, so to ferment them at higher temperatures. You're not going to get that lager taste by fermenting it at that higher temperature. I could be chatting a load of cob's wallet right now, because things might have changed. But when I were doing it six, seven years ago, you were getting ale yeast in a lager kit. So yeah, what I love about this kit is that they've switched out Whatever yeast they were using, again, I don't know about it, but I do know that the Safale yeast is not a standard kit yeast. So uh, by looking at this, I'm pretty happy. And it does say at the back that it's um, it wants you to be fermenting uh, English ale yeast for the production of a large range of ales, fast fermentation, sedimentation, high. Um, but it's telling you here to ideally brew it between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. Now that's exactly why I'm not doing lagers because I can't ferment at lower temperatures, but I can ferment at these temperatures. So yeah, right. Look at me standing here like I know what I'm talking about. I don't really, but uh, yeah. So that's what you get as soon as you open it. Now underneath that, you get the Munson's flagship um, instructions. Uh, now you've probably watched all these things before. I'm, I'm late in the game here doing this video, aren't I? But, you know, if you've not seen how these are brewed before, we're doing it. So, you get this lovely little information slash poster thing. Tells you about <clears throat> all the brews that they've got at the minute. You've got your Hoppy Citrus Fruity West Coast IPA. Hoppy Multi Citrus Pale American Ale. You've got your Multi Toffee Hoppy. My missus is like, we're doing that next. I said, no, we're not. That's a winter brew, that. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, honestly. So that's an American Amber Ale. And then you've got a rich, creamy velvet milk stout. Now here's the thing. I've never really been into stouts. But um, seeing as I'm brewing at higher temperatures, I might have to try a couple. 
right you flip it over on the back you've got your instructions now you know i've been out of the game a long time now so um i'm going to follow the instructions i've got a rough idea of what i need to do but we're going to follow these instructions today so first things first everything's been cleaned and sanitized we're going to get oh i'm moving on too quick aren't i underneath you get your two cans of your um you get two cans of your malt extract it's nicely laid out so it comes in a little box like that on top and then underneath you've got two cans of your malt extract like this so yeah let's get the kettle on let's get these on i might crack open that other beer and while this sort of gets soft i'm gonna have a beer so let's do that now then we've uh, sterilized everything i've got two cans of the malt extract in hot water. It's been in there for about five minutes now. So we're gonna bang that in the fermenter. I've got some water on the boil now to swill out the cans. And then it's calling for four liters of boiled water uh, into the fermenter. Now, obviously living in a motorhome, I've not got the luxury. Well, I could have a normal kettle, but we don't, because the missus wanted one of them whistling kettles. So, I think I can fit about two litres of water in that whistling kettle, so it's going to take a bit of time. Obviously, with the magic of YouTube, you're not going to be have to go through the waiting for that. So, let's crack on and do that. Obviously, limited on space, so I'm going to have to get a bit, bit savvy with um, where I'm going to place this camera, so it's actually worth watching uh, the process. So, let's crack on and do that, chaps. Lovely day. Carl's panting away there, aren't you, lad? Yeah? Let's do it. In we go with two cans of the malt extract. That one looks a bit funny, doesn't it? What's all that about? Let's get that in. Excuse the whistling. That bloody whistle kettle this is wanted. God. Let's get that off. Right, now we're going to fill these up with a bit of hot water. Sorry about that chaps. Imagine living with that. Mental, right, I've put some hot water in there just to get that a bit soft. Is that supposed to, is that, bloody hell, getting a facial here? Is that stuff support, is that malt extract supposed to look like that? Let me know in comments, look at me. Says he don't want to be a bloody YouTuber, but I'm doing all stuff now, aren't I? Right, we're going to give that a couple of minutes just to melt off, and we'll pour the rest of it in there. And until then, I'm going to have to get this bloody water on go again, aren't I? In we go with the rest of the malt extract out of the tin. Crikey, that's hot. Let's get it in. That, is it supposed to be like that? The old top were like that. You saw it pour out, didn't you? Don't know if it was supposed to be like that. Ooh, shit, that's hot. Sorry about language, lads. Ugh. Jesus. There we go. Got fingertips like asbestos. Banging. Right, let's give it a little mix up. I'll utilise my spoon shortly. Now I'll tell you what, the biggest thing that I've been bothered about since brewing in here, obviously living in a small space, it's contamination with like, well, Carlos is an airy bugger and does he give off a lot of hair? Christ he does. So I've had to be really meticulous, even down to, I've had these bottles for a couple of days, uh, I've had to give them a wipe down, uh, death all them spray that all and wipe them down so i'm being really meticulous when it comes to trying to keep everything as clean as i possibly can and sanitized um bottled water again i'm living down on the the, the southern west coast uh in dorset water's really hard so i've opted for the uh the bottled water now i believe you can get some additives uh, to add 
to your water if you're in hard areas but you know when I was living up north and doing this I always use bottled water anyway just so um, I knew I was right do you know what I mean right so we're nearly there now it says we're on about 50 uh, oh, about 17 litres so we're going to top it up a bit more get it to 20 litres on the side of the uh, the bucket really nice um, design on these malt miller buckets um, obviously I'm you know a lot of fermentators have um, there we go 20 litres we're up there um, all of all the uh, fermenting buckets I've ever bought do have um, do have uh, these but uh, I just like how it's OP you see so you can see right through um, right I'm gonna stop chatting let's get this stirred Right, so uh, we've topped up to 20 litres with uh, cool bottled water, not tat. Um, it's saying now for me to take a, uh, a gravity reading. So let's do that. Yeah. Now it's been a bit of a while since I last did a gravity reading, but I've got this beer, wine and beer hydrometer in here. Um, so let's try and work it out what we're doing. Let's have a look at the uh, the hydrometer itself. As you can see, it's got all these different readings. So let's pop that in and see what the gravity comes out at. Right, chaps, I'm going to have to call upon you guys to help me out on this one. Let's see if we can get it to focus. So, I'll put a picture in, but I think that says 151 or 150. 1051 or 1052. I'll put a picture in. Now then, look at that for some colour. Isn't that lovely, that? You can just expect what that's going to come out like. So fingers crossed it comes out well, but look at that. Yeah, let's check the temp and then pitch the yeast. Let's do it. So we're going in with a temperature probe. I'm going to see what the temperature is. So it says 28, so obviously I can't go pitching in just yet. So I'll up and leave that for a bit. So yeah, let's leave it and we'll come back to it in a couple of hours. Just got back from work now. I um, did that brew at about uh, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Um, it was like 26 degrees. Um, it's just close to nine o'clock now. It's at 21 degrees, uh, being a bit cheeky, but I'm going to pitch it now. Obviously, it says between 15 and 20, but I don't want to get it in now. So this time tomorrow, I can put the ops in. So, yeah, we're going to do that. So we've disinfected the, the scissors and uh, I've disinfected the, uh, the yeast as well. And there we go. We're all pitched now.